So good evening, all of you. Uh, today we are going to start with mathematical typing for MS Word for both IAI as well as IFOA. So first, what we are going to do is we are going to start with some general instructions. First of all, I hope that all of you have MS 2013 or a newer version because versions below 2013 are not acceptable by IFOA or IAI. Now, apart from that, there are some basic ground rules that all of you must follow regarding the format of your answers. First of all, make sure that the line spacing for your MS Word in all your answers, for irrespective of whatever paper you're giving, whether it's the CM series, CS or CB series, the line spacing should be two. Now, how do we change the line spacing? As you can see on the screen, this button is there with two arrows. This is the one for line spacing and just select two. So you can see over here, my line spacing is much lesser compared to this. The only reason why we do this is so that our answer looks presentable. There is so much content on our answer script that often the examiner can get confused or they may, may miss out on some parts of your answer which is why a line spacing should always be two. Apart from that, your font size should not exceed 11 or 12 and do not change the font. Whatever is your default font, for some it's Calibri, Arial or Times New Roman. These three are the standard fonts. These three are the standard fonts. So please be sure that you're not changing the font and making it anything very decorative. This font size is for the body of your answer. Of course, when you're starting an answer and you're writing the question number, then you can change it to let's say 14, 15 to highlight the question number. But apart from that, all your answers, whether it's the numbers or the uh, calculations or whether it's theory answers, they should be in size 11 or 12. And the font should be whatever is the default font for your respective devices. The margins, meaning the sides that are left on the paper or uh, on your answer script should be one inches or 2.54 centimeters. This again is default. And in case any of your devices have anything else, then you can simply change it or check it by going to layout. Here is the margins option. The normal margin option, as you can see, is 2.54 centimeters on all four sides. So please ensure that this is the margin orientation for all your answer scripts, because again, it makes your paper look neat and tidy and there is space for the marker to use for marking the paper. There should be no color at all. Apart from black, you are not supposed to use any color in your answer script, especially not red. And there is no need also to use any color because the only place where you might want to use color is to highlight something or maybe to write the final answer. So all you can do is you can simply bold it, bold, make the font bold, use italics or underline the answer. That is enough for highlighting any portion of your answer script. One very important thing, I'm sure many of you must be using the newest versions of MS Word or MS Office, and there is a dictation feature. This dictation feature is basically where you can speak and the computer and the device will type on its own so please be sure that you are not using this feature at all because it is strictly prohibited as it gives you an upper hand about over the others and the institute has completely said no for this for the dictation feature as well as for using any other writing material for example there is the apple pen or any other touchscreen laptop if you are using then please don't make use of those features Simply use your hands to type your entire answer script. No other way of writing is accepted. And don't think that they won't understand how you've done it because trust me, they have a lot of advanced technology to do all this. Again, saved equations. This we will come to later when we use the equation editor. This point, very, very, very important because it can easily be checked what time was the document created and what time was it last edited. So when you upload your answer script to the Institute, 
they will check what time was it created meaning if your exam is starting at 1 pm ist then don't even create the document at 12:59 thinking that i'm going to save time by doing this no instead you might risk your paper by doing this just that one minute is going to cost you a lot so it's always better that at 1 pm when you get the question paper you click on download and while it is downloading that time only you should open the word file don't even open the application before 1 pm same goes for closing it don't think that the word file is open in the background and you are uploading the word file and you are uploading the word file no strict no make sure that you close your word file and then you upload it because in case your word file is open and by chance even if you press a space bar that will be shown as modification in the document so that we do not want because that will give them the message that we have over uh, exceeded the time basically so please be sure that the creation time and the last modified time is within the time given to you start each answer on a new page now this we've all done since childhood any exam that we have given this is the standard rule that every answer should begin on a new page i would say even every part if possible begin on a new page because here there is no constraint on the number of pages that you can use there is no sort of wastage also that you will think that i want to save paper so i don't want to every part you have ample amount of space so please just for yourself that they do not miss out on any answer try to do every part but definitely every answer should be on a new page now it might happen that you are trying out one question and say the last part you haven't been able to do or you want you think that you might be wanting to add something later so you what can people do they press enter 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 till the time the new page the next page comes no don't do that because later when you come back to this and when you will start typing over here the next page may, when you have written answer let's say 3 that will also keep going down so the entire format of your paper will become jumbled up so what do you do let's say i ended over here there is um i'm typing something and let's say the entire remaining portion of this page is still empty but i want to utilize this at some other point of time in the examination so instead of doing enter 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 and going to the next page what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to insert and insert a blank page so now when i will type over here then this won't hamper my next page contents my next page will remain intact is it clear so that's why this is something that uh in the middle of the exam stress maybe we tend to forget and we don't realize and then while submitting when you're scrolling through our answer script we realize that the entire paper is so jumbled up so that's why be sure that whenever even if you end on the last line start the next answer by inserting a blank page instead of pressing enter okay <clears throat> next paste special can be used from the home tab this is just a very general thing in ms word usually paste special is not required it is more of a thing for excel where you only want to paste the values or you only want to paste the formulas but uh, let's say if you are copy pasting from r then maybe you want to uh, keep the original formatting or you want to change the formatting you just want the text so that time you can use it but as far as ms word is concerned for typing paste special is not that important a feature next is very important don't proof your work now what is proofing your work for example over here this control plus z that i have written there is a red line under it all of us know that the red lines mean that there is a grammatical error there is a spelling error and if there is any green line in your document then that means there is a grammatical error so proofing your work means that you will think that when i send it to the institute if they see a red line or they see a green line then maybe they will think that i have written something wrong but actually it is correct so you will want to remove those red and green lines to give the examiner a good impression of yourself but please don't do it 
don't do it why because when you are removing those red and green lines it is in fact sending a wrong message to the examiner that probably you were not sure of your work that is why you are removing it or you have in some way not exactly tampered with it but it is just it can be considered as an unfair mean sort of an unfair mean so do not ever proof your work only for the cm and cs series where mostly it's numericals so there what happens is often in the middle of a sum uh, you get so many red lines because you are typing letters as an equation let's say you are typing the letters as an equation or when you are writing the sum maybe you are writing x bar as x b a r so that time a red line might come or a green line might come somewhere so in those papers often it gets very clumsy and untidy to see so many red and green lines so only for the cm and cs papers we will make an exception that you can prove your work even that i would suggest that avoid it because it's not required when the examiner is checking they will check line by line so they will know that the red and green lines are not completely meant for you but in case some of you if you all feel that your work is looking too clumsy and you are finding it difficult to work with it then you can prove it by going on file here we have the options button proofing and then at the bottom most section of proofing there is hide spelling errors in this document and hide grammar errors simply if you check these two boxes all your red and green lines will vanish see my red line has vanished so this is called proofing your work but as i said it's not required until and unless you find it extremely necessary to do so up uh, then always put header or footer with paper name and diet now you have you know that we have to put a header or and a footer in our answer scripts so that uh, the examiner knows what paper it is and which diet it is till few terms back we were supposed to give our arn also but now they have changed the guidelines they have strictly mentioned that your arn should not be mentioned anywhere in your answer script because in some way you are disclosing your identity so your arn should not be mentioned anywhere inside the answer script it should only be mentioned in the file name which we will let you know you will be uh, reminded all the guidelines just before your exam so don't worry about that but be sure that when you are writing when you are making the header and footer only mention the paper name and the diet for example if it is your cs1 a paper then just write cs1 a april 2022 diet that's it don't mention your arn definitely never ever mention your name don't ever even just forget your name for those 3 hours and just the paper name and the diet should be both on the header as well as the footer use the ruler if you want to change alignment of answers not necessary only do it if you have time to make your presentation better so as you can see on all your word on your word application there is a ruler on the top and the ruler on the left so what is the use of this ruler suppose i'm placing my cursor in front of m and i'm moving it by clicking on the ruler i'm moving it so what happened that one line the particular line where i placed my cursor it moved away from the others so it can happen that suppose you are giving bullet points for an answer but uh, you want the bullet point the auto positioning of the bullet points is not what you want let's say the bullet points are coming like this but you want the bullet points to start from more towards the left so what you can do at that point of time you can use this ruler to align it now you can see when i clicked only this button then only my text came here but my bullet is still intact more towards the left so for the bullet also to move you have to click this arrow as well this button as well so in case you feel that there are some portions 
see as it is it does not matter exactly where your bullets are the main aim is that your content should be correct it should be neat and it should be legible and understandable these things are just additional factors that maybe if you're completing your paper much before time and you still have the time to make your paper look even better for example what we used to do in school it was not necessary that you make an ending line after every answer as long as you have left sufficient space but if you had the time you would still draw ending lines right that is only to make it even better so similarly over here this feature is something that is only to be used when you actually have time don't make it a priority you have 10 more priorities before this okay in case an auto change is made to your document for example the first letter is made capital but you want it to remain small press undo immediately so what do i mean over here let's say i'm trying to type an equation i'm trying to type x is equal to y plus z so what happened my x as you know when we use variables we want our variables to be in small case but what happened since this was the first letter in the line ms word automatically changed it to uppercase and this is not what we wanted so what should we do in such a case either you backspace it and type in x again that is one option but what is even better since you know that this is going to happen again and again since you will be dealing with so many equations so many sums this is something that will happen again and again so you should be while practicing you will know when ms word is going to do this so what can you do <clears throat> this happened i'm just going to press Control z and see automatically it went back to whatever form i typed it in now what is Control z Control z is actually a shortcut for the undo button i think over here the undo button is not present but in most of your devices over here near the ms word icon you will see that there is an arrow towards the left that arrow is the undo button so in if you are not comfortable comfortable in pressing Control z which i feel that you should be comfortable with with time but in case you do not know you do not want to use Control z you can simply press the undo button and automatically it will go back to its original form as you typed it <coughs> so these are some of the very general instructions for ms word typing now coming to the more important portions to the actual typings and the shortcuts first of all we will learn some very very important shortcuts for the overall which is applicable to all the papers meaning these are not shortcuts that you will be using only for writing your equations or only for writing your answers these shortcuts these shortcuts will help you work more easily and much much more faster so first of all is the control s what does now one thing i want to tell you all from the beginning that these shortcuts which are mentioned over here are for windows laptops anyone who is using mac os just replace all the ctrl with your command button on your keyboard the command button and the ctrl on uh, the command button on the mac os and the ctrl button on your windows laptops do the same function they have the same function so for saving your work very very important keep saving your work even after every answer or even if if there's a very big answer then midway in the answer i would say save your work you've already named your file in the very beginning after that all you have to do while typing you just have to press Control s and just pressing that one button together those two buttons you have to press it together don't press Control, pick up your finger and then press s no all these buttons that all these shortcuts that are written over here these buttons have to be pressed together at the same time so just by pressing Control s you are saving your work so if any god forbid anything happens to your device then your work at least you know is saved till whichever portion you have done you know that that portion of your work is safe next is the cut what does the cut button uh, cut function do suppose i select this word immediately 
now when i right click it we get the cut cut copy paste options cut what does cut do it removes the selected portion from the original place and then it gets copied where do you want to paste it wherever you want just go and paste it so the difference between cut and copy is copy it duplicates cut it removes it from the original location and puts it into a new location so for example if i want to remove immediately from here and place it on the previous line so i will press control x so as you can see the immediately has gone from here is gone from here now the next is shortcut for paste is control v so for example i want to press uh, i want to place the word immediately after better over here so i will just press control v and the immediately has come over here so this is the utilization of cut it is always used with paste and the same goes for copy what happens with copy again i'm going to copy this by pressing control c so the immediately is still intact over here but even now if i place my cursor here and press control v it will come here as well so this is the difference between cut and copy and these are the shortcuts control x control c and control v next are the shortcuts for alignment there are three kinds of alignments in ms word right alignment center alignment and left alignment right alignment is when we are starting from the right margin left alignment is that matlab when you are doing when you are making something right aligned then all the lines are starting from the right margin when you are doing left alignment then the straight line can be drawn on the left side of the margin it will be better if i show this to you with an example so for the buttons all these shortcuts that i have written over here all of them also have corresponding buttons but to this is only to make your work faster if you want to use the buttons then the alignment buttons are over here justify alignment is also one but usually we do not use this because in fact we hardly use even left alignment because it makes your work look a little different and maybe it's not what you intended to look like but you want to realize it so <clears throat> this is right alignment because it's starting from the right margin center alignment gets the entire portion to the center of the page and left alignment moves the entire text to the left side of the page clear now what is the shortcut for this the shortcut for this if you want to make it centrally centrally aligned you will simply press control e for right alignment it's control r and control l for left alignment usually we use left alignment only because that is how we even write in normal life sometimes maybe you can use center alignment for let's say some equations or maybe something some title you're giving or something specific that you want to highlight you can use center alignment for those portions is this clear this portion up to here everything is clear everything is clear up to here does anyone have any doubts till this portion then we will move on to the next shortcuts okay how to find ruler okay so uh, in case your device does not have the rulers already present you can go to the view tab here you have the option for ruler just check this box when you check this box the ruler the ruler will come let me know if it's happening yes ma'am thank you no problem okay next we come to increasing and decreasing the font size so suppose you are typing and you want some portion to be a little more highlighted so you want to increase the font size or 
a very common thing that often happens in while writing your papers is suppose i'm writing answer 6 so obviously since this is my question number i will want it to be highlighted so it will be in bold and probably the font size will also be a little bigger but then when i go to the next line the next line i want to start my answer which should ideally be in font size 11 or 12 but the auto generated font size is coming as 60 and it is also coming as bold so in this case after every answer it gets a little impractical to go to the home tab and again change the size so what you can simply do is you can use this shortcut what is the shortcut for increasing the font size you have to press control plus shift and the greater than sign so basically the shift is to go to the greater than sign as you can see on all your keyboards the greater than sign and the less than signs are used when the shift is pressed along with it so it is actually control plus greater than sign and control plus less than sign the shift is written only so that you remember to press the shift along with it so for uh, increasing the font size it's greater than sign for decreasing the font size it's less than sign so over here and similarly i'll just tell you the bold shortcut also the shortcut for making any text bold is control b and for making any text that is already bold to getting back to to getting it back to normal also you have to press control b so over here for example my answer 6 is already bold as well as my font size is increased so when i go to the next line and i want to start typing my answer first i will quickly press control b so as you can see over here the bold button was on up till now but now that i have pressed control b the on thing has gone now it is back to normal and i will decrease my font size i have decreased it to 12 and now when i type it it's coming as the normal content size and format so after every answer it becomes easier for you because your hands are already on the keyboard so instead of going back to the mouse and doing it again and again it's easier and obviously this will come to you with practice you right now you might be thinking that i have to remember so many shortcuts and what if i miss a button or anything like that trust me when you practice and typing requires a decent amount of practice you will be so used to it that you will even forget that you can use buttons for it next is the undo and redo so undo i have already showed you all the control z it is the undo button on the top side uh, on your top left of the screen you can most of you must be seeing an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right so the left arrow is the undo button which makes you undo your last action whatever you have done maybe you have typed something maybe you have backspaced something so they will just undo that action and what is redo let's say you have undone something which you didn't mean to let's say you have undone thrice i typed something i type three words i want to undo only every one so i press control i want to remove every one so i press control z once but for example let's say by mistake i pressed it twice so now my evening is also gone what i can do is i can press control y so what did it do by mistake if i undo something so i want to redo it again so i will just press control y now that is the redo button so undo and redo after that there are some basic formatting bold underline and italics these three are usually all that you use of there is double underline also there is try through etc which you do not require for any of the actual exams so for underlining a text it is just control u for italics it's control i and for bold it's control b but please be sure that when you are pressing this when you are using this shortcut either you use the shortcut before typing the word or the text that you want to be in this form 
and suppose if you want to apply this to something that you have already typed let's say if i want to make this times new roman into italics so i will have to select this you cannot just place your cursor in the middle and press control i that will only make the roman word italics for the entire thing to become italics you have to press it you have to select it you have to select that entire portion and press control i and to get it back to normal just like i said for the bold you again press control i and your for, uh, text is back to the normal format similarly for control u once i press control u the font uh, the text is underlined again i press and it's back to normal now next is a new document for the actual exam usually you will not need to open any new document but this is even for your general working with ms office if at any point of time you want to open a new document you can simply press control n and now i am here with a new blank document simply control n and you have a new document to work with for moving one paragraph at a time most of us we feel that scrolling using our trackpad is easier it is for some people but in case you are typing and in the middle of it you want to move somewhere you want to move between the words or between the lines so a shortcut for it when you press the up and down arrow simply then you will just move say one line or one word right but to make it faster now it is most laptops they do not have the uh, page up page down buttons in the older version in the older laptops or the older desktops there used to be a page up page down up, uh, button which would make it very fast but right now we do not have it so what can we do is we can move through paragraphs meaning ki we will move one paragraph at a time for example here we have three lines in this paragraph so we will have to press the down arrow thrice to cover the entire paragraph but instead if we press control along with the up or down arrow then we will move one paragraph at a time let's say i have placed my cursor at down and now i am pressing control down arrow so as you can see it's come to always put header or footer so the entire paragraph was covered at once obviously over here you will feel that it is so redundant and it is not required but in your answer script when you will have so many paragraphs in such huge paragraphs that time these things might come in handy so it's there is no harm in knowing it for selecting the full document i think most of you will know this you simply press control a control a selects the entire document including all images all graphs all text everything selecting lines most of you must be using your cursor to select any form of text or any uh, image chart etc what you can do is you can press shift along with the up and down arrow or the right left arrows so right left arrows are used to go letter by letter if you are pressing shift along with the right and left arrows then you are going selecting letter by letter but if you press your uh, shift with the up and down arrow then you can see that you are going line by line now for example i want to select this entire paragraph starting from better so instead of just going word by word what i can do is i can use my up arrow <coughs> i have come up to a i can just now i can use the left arrow to complete the remaining portion so it becomes significantly faster when you use this technique instead of the right and left arrows next is superscript and subscript so now superscript and subscript is something that is very very widely used in actual exams so subscript is when you want something to be written no sir i will explain equation editor after this 
after we are done with the general things then we will uh, move on to only equation at a time so subscript is when you want as you can see here is the subscript button x to the base 2 and this is x to the power 2 this is the superscript and this is the subscript so how do we while typing how do we go to the subscript we will simply press control and equal to control equal to and i have come to the subscript as you can see my x is written normally and 2 is in the subscript now make sure that when you are done using the subscript please be sure that you press control equal to once again to undo the subscript option please don't forget this otherwise half of the answer will get typed into the subscript mode and then after a point of time when you look up at the screen you will realize what a mess you have made so as soon as you are done typing in the subscript once again press control equal to and then start typing the rest of it similarly for superscript control shift equal to because here we have to use the plus sign and the plus can be used only when we press shift along with the button so control shift equal to or control plus makes you go to the uh, superscript option once again make sure that you come back to the normal line for typing the rest of your answer for deselecting the superscript mode you have to press the button once again now this is also a very important shortcut is finding a word in the file let's say you want to you cannot find a portion of your answer or suppose uh, not just while typing but also while studying in case you want to uh, you want to refer to a particular portion but you don't know exactly where is that portion so what you can do is you can press ctrl f and over here we get a search bar here you can type in any word and everywhere in your open document everywhere the word is used those portions will be highlighted and you can move through them and arrive at the desired portion so for example i use the word spacing and i search for it so over here i have used spacing once and it has come it is highlighted where i've used spacing uh, let's say editor 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 also i have used once so that's why it's come like this if i try to do let me see a word that i have used twice undo see undo i have used twice once in the table and once over here in this bullet point so what can i do here you can see there are two results for each so in case i want to move through them or navigate through them i can just press these arrows and i can navigate through all the undos used in my document clear so this is all for the general portion of ms word typing after this we will move on to the equation editor but first i want to know whether up to here everything is clear to all of you does anyone have any doubts <clears throat> clear to everyone okay good so now we are going to begin with equation editor so what is equation editor some of you might have heard of it some for some it is something that is completely new so equation editor is basically a feature in ms word where you can easily do mathematical typing matlab there for example if you are typing normally 
and you want to type such formulas now obviously these formulas are very complicated and many of you must be thinking i'm sure you might get very intimidated in the beginning uh, when you get to know that the exams are to be held online and you have to write such huge equations in ms word so you must be wondering how are we supposed to write such complicated equations so this is where the equation editor comes into play because it really makes things much easier and it's as if you are writing on paper using the same symbols and notations everything so first of all how do we arrive in the equation editor mode for windows devices it is alt and equal to alt and equal to together you have to press and for mac os you all will see that there is a button where the entire word control is written so control plus equal to i think it's ctrl not control just check once but there is a button on the left side of your keyboard that button along with equal to you have to press for getting into the equation editor mode so now let me show you how it looks over here i am typing normally i have typed this normally when i want to enter into the equation editor mode i have pressed alt plus equal to and you can see a new tab has opened over here and plus my uh, typing area has also changed over here now if i type anything then it will come in italics plus the size is a little increased this is how you know that your equation editor mode is on now how do we type over here obviously if you type anything and everything it will not automatically come into that form some things yes they auto intake that form but for most of the things you have to make certain amends or use certain extra symbols to get it into the equation form so first let's learn how do we get these symbols for the most basic ones x square and x base 2 which is the superscript and the subscript anything that you want to put in the superscript you will simply use the this sign it is shift plus 6 on top of the 6 in your keyboard you will see that there is an upward hat sort of a thing made so you that is the symbol or that is the extra button that you have to use for making anything go into the superscript and for getting anything in the subscript you have to use the underscore button which is present above the minus sign or uh, near the zero button on your keyboard so first let's try typing the typing these first i entered into my equation editor mode now i press x i want to put 2 in its power so first i will press the upward hat and then i will write 2 as soon as i click space it has changed into x square as we write it uh, when using pen and paper right similarly for x base 2 i have used the underscore and as soon as i press the space the 2 has gone into the subscript now this thing you can uh, you will see that maybe there is an entire expression in the superscript or an entire expression in the subscript in such cases all you have to do is make use of brackets so for example i want to type x to the power uh, 3 plus y x to the power 3 plus y so what will i do i will open my bracket i will write 3 plus y inside the bracket so what is this signifying that the entire 3 plus y portion has to go into the superscript right same goes for the subscript this is how the subscript also works clear next is the plus minus minus plus less than equal to and greater than equal to signs these signs for example uh, somewhere that you might want to use plus minus is shridharacharya suppose you are writing the shridhara writing an equation for shridhara charya so there you have minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac 
So this plus minus sign can be used over there. If you're typing in the equation editor, then simply when you type plus and minus together, it automatically comes into this form. So as I had said, that there are certain things that the uh, MS Word application automatically intakes that you are trying to write these. For example, if you write integration, then it won't take it naturally. But the plus minus thing, the minus plus less than e less than equal to and greater than equal to. These are some signs that the MS Word automatically intakes and gets it into the symbol form. Right? So for less than equal to, what did we type? We typed the less than button and the equal to button. The greater than button and the equal to button. Correct? So this is how these symbols can easily be typed. The right arrow and the left arrow. The right arrow and the left arrow are usually the only two types of arrows that you use in actual exams. The other arrows, let's say the top arrow, bottom arrow, sideways, any arrows, those arrows are not really used anywhere in any of the papers. So we will concentrate only on these two. For right arrow, it's very simple. You can just make it using the minus sign and the less than sign, uh, greater than sign clear and for the left arrow what can you do we will just use a backward slash now the backward slash is the magical element in the equation editor it is truly the magical element because by using the backward slash as i had said that you have to use certain extra buttons or certain extra symbols so that the equation editor takes it into the symbolic form. Suppose you want to type mu as in the Greek letter mu. So only if you simply type mu, which is mu, then it won't come into the symbol. But if you want it in the symbolic form, you simply use a backward slash and type mu here. It's become in the symbolic form. So that is that is why the backward slash is the magical element for equation editor. Anything, trust me, any symbol you want, if you use the backward slash with the correct spelling, then you will get those symbols. Apart from that, there is not equal to subset and belongs to. These three are other notations that uh, that might come in use to you while writing your answers. So the shortcuts for these, as I said, there has to be a backward slash. For not equal to, it is simply NE, not equal. For subset, it's subset. And for belongs to, you have to use the word in. There is therefore and since also. Therefore is backward slash with therefore written. And for the since, you have to use the word because. Don't think that you will write since and your symbol will come the opposite of therefore. No, not everything is that easy. You have to remember certain things. So you have to use because over here. Over here for not equal, you have to use any. For belongs to, you have to use in. So these are some things that you will have to remember. And this will only come with practice. Now, these are the shortcuts. This is when you are typing. So it's always easier that since you're using the keyboard, everything happens within the keyboard. But in case some of you don't feel comfortable remembering these shortcuts, or in case some of you feel that these are too many to remember, what you can do is you enter the equation editor mode. Now this tab which has opened, this ribbon which has opened, here you will find all these symbols, all the symbols that you will ever require in your answer script are present over here. You can select these. There are mathematical symbols. There are the basic Greek letters that are most commonly used. There is therefore, there is square root, cube root, fourth root, 
all of these are present over here even delta for partial derivatives in fact this delta you won't use for partial derivatives this is the partial differential delta so you can use the symbols from here also in case you cannot remember the shortcut or in case you find it easier for the superscript subscript we have the script button now in the script button you will find superscript subscript both superscript as well as subscript and there are uh, there are different varieties of everything present in the equation editor so let's try typing with this also once suppose i want to type x to the power 3 plus y just like we did in our previous example so on the normal line we just want x then we use our right arrow on the keyboard to move to the next box this is very important that you have to make sure that while you are typing in the equation editor which box or which portion is shaded whichever portion is shaded your text is being typed in that portion so for example you type x and your cursor is still on the normal line then the x portion is shaded but you do not want to continue typing here so you will just press the next uh, the right arrow and the shaded portion becomes the superscript portion so here i will just <clears throat> type 3 plus y now again i want to come back to my normal line so again i will press the right arrow and now earlier my 3 plus y was shaded but now it's not shaded anymore because now we are typing on the normal line here yeah. <clears throat> same happens for subscript as well i click on the first box to type x then i use the right arrow to move to the subscript and i type 3 plus y clear yeah. infinity and proportional to these are two symbols that are very very widely used in actuarial papers infinity especially and proportional to in some places yes so for infinity instead of again and again going to the equation tab and selecting infinity you can simply type backslash i n f t y this is something that you will have to remember that the entire word if you type infinity as a whole let's see if i type infinity then nothing happens it remains like this what i have to type is i n f t y so it automatically changes into the infinity symbol same happens with proportional to the shortcut is prop 2 and the symbol comes clear yeah. for typing any of the greek letters for typing any of the greek letters all you have to do i'm sure all of you while studying obviously you know the name of the greek letters it's mu sigma delta any greek letter that you are working with you know how it is pronounced so what you have to do is either you can choose the greek letter from the symbol tab that is one option here if you will see over here you will get an option of basic math greek letters operators arrow scripts geometry etc usually only the basic math and greek letters are used for actuarial papers so if you go to greek letters here you find all the greek letters correct that uh, you will be using so either you can go and select from here but since in some papers there are so much there is such a wide use of the greek letters that it becomes difficult to go again and again to type uh, to select so what you can do is you can just learn the spelling the spellings aren't very dif uh, difficult they are usually just four to five letter words lambda is l a m b d a and in case there is any letter which you do not know the name of of which uh, the spelling that you are using is not converting it into the symbol so how will you know that you can simply go to the letter letter and see this is eta most of you might not know the symbol 
but this is eta and here you can see the spelling also so once you see the spelling then for the rest of your term you are sure that eta is eta then you won't have to go again and again and check so all the symbols while practicing you will come across mostly all the symbols and that then at that point of time you can go and check the spelling and then you can keep using it one thing <clears throat> let's say if i like phi then this is what comes but in the normal distribution when we use the cdf then the phi comes with two lines on the top and bottom something like this so these are two kinds of files how do i know which phi do i want in my answer script for this is a capital phi and this is a small phi just like in the english alphabet we have small case and uh, upper case and lower case in the same way even the greeks they have lower case and upper case another is theta there are two thetas this theta is usually the one which we all have done when we were studying let's say trigonometry in school or in some other portions even in our actuaries and the capital theta is something that cm2 students will be familiar with that time we use this theta we do not use the normal theta in cm2 so when we want to type a capital letter all you have to do is make the first letter of the word capital so when i wanted a capital phi for the normal distribution cdf i made the p capital and i simply typed phi so i got the capital phi and for the small phi which is used for the pdf of normal distribution i will not make the p capital i will let everything be in lower case and i will get the small phi same for sigma this is small sigma and the capital sigma is the sum operator this one the sum operator is the capital sigma so here if i type sigma with a capital s i will get the sum operator lambda also we use both upper case as well as lower case this is the upper case lambda and this is the lower case lambda so depending on which variable or which letter you want to use be sure that you are using uh, the cap first letter in this upper case or the lower case accordingly okay so this is for the greek letters apart from the greek letters now there are certain calculation or certain operators that we use what are these operators there is integration there is square roots there is a uh, summation product exponential differentiation all of these are somewhat operators or uh, these are very widely used in our expressions so let's start with exponential since it's the easiest exponential is nothing <clears throat> but you have to write e in the normal line and rest everything goes in the superscript so you can just use the normal superscript shortcut by using the upward arrow and you can write anything in exponential terms correct square root or cube root or nth any radical how do you arrive at that for square root the shortcut is s q r t and i will get a square root now over here again if i type 4x plus y you can see only my 4x came under the square root how to avoid this always be sure that you are starting with a bracket so that you are telling ms word that i want this entire thing to be under the root otherwise what they will do as soon as you press the space bar they will close the square root so i pressed the space bar and now they have closed the square root after y so be sure that you are using brackets very very well and don't be very uh, lazy to use brackets i would say even if you are typing one letter get into the habit of using brackets it's always better now if you are using if you want a cube root so you can write cbrt 
and for any other root for any other radical instead of using a shortcut shortcuts i would say limited to square root and cube root simply go and select this because it is something that you will hardly ever use so what will you do suppose i want the 10th root so i will type 10 in the small box on top of the root and inside the root whatever i want i'm going to type this Let's say inside the root, I want this. Here, yeah. so this is how you use nth radical. Next is integration. Integration, the shortcut for integration is int with a backward slash, like always. The integration symbol will come. Now, this, as you can see, is indefinite integration where we do not have to give any limits. But suppose you are doing definite integration and you want the limits. So there is always a lower limit and an upper limit. So you want something below the sign and you want something on top. So how will you do that? For the lower limit, first we will always write the lower limit. You will put the subscript symbol, which is the underscore, and you will write the lower limit, let's say 6. And now please be sure that you do not press space already. Without pressing the space, suppose if I press space, then my lower limit came. But now I do not have any way of putting the upper limit. Correct? So don't press this, don't be in a hurry to press the space. First, you type both the superscript as well as the subscript. Correct? This is how we do it. And after typing both, you press the space. As you can see now, both my upper limit and my lower limit have come. And then you can simply uh, write whatever you are trying to integrate. Let's say 3y plus 8. Now, when you want, now next, what do we write? We write dy, correct? Make sure that you are moving out of this box because here, if you write space dy, then what is happening? It is becoming a part of this, which you do not want. The dy is always separate from the expression that you are trying to integrate, correct? So you have to use your right arrow to move out of that box and then you write dy. Okay? This, these, if I, uh, that is why integration is one thing where you have to type with 150% concentration. One thing is the upper limit and lower limit. Because in case that you leave it after your lower limit, then there is no way you can add the upper limit in the same thing. And the other thing is to move the right, to press the right arrow and move out of the rectangle each time after typing the expression. Now, some of you might find it easier that who will do so much of, uh, who will get into so much of trouble. So what you can do is you can simply go to the integration option and here you will find all the different kinds of integrals. There is an indefinite integration integral. There is definite integration with the limits. There is double, triple integration, double integration. All kinds of varieties are present over here. So you can simply choose from here as well if you find it easier. Or you can type it like I just showed it to you. This, in a similar way, we will be using the sum and the product operator. The integration sum and product operators work in a very similar way. How does it work? For the sum, we simply use SUM. Yes, Shri. Uh, ma'am, actually, I had one question of the topic regarding exams. Ma'am, we have to give an exams next year, April. So for paper, is it final if we have to go to the center or we will give on MS? No, uh, they have said that uh, till September 2022, exams will be held online. Uh, okay. So the two terms will definitely be online.
I will just get back to you all in the next class. I don't know why it's not working over here. But anyway, for the large operators, suppose you want to use the summation. Obviously, the summation also you will use with limits. Like I have done over here. With limits, how do we put the limits? Same way as you put limits for the integral. So if, suppose I put my summation from here. With limit, how do I do it? There is an option of using the summation with limits and this one is without limits. Same goes for the product. The product P R O D is for product. How do we add the limit for this? Now, one thing again for product and for summations, what do we do? We usually uh, in the limits, we write I is equal to one in the lower limit and let's say the end of it, uh, let's say 100. I is from 1 to 100. So for the lower limit, it's not just one character. It is multiple characters. So again, be sure that you are using brackets. Right? So this is how the upper limit and the lower limit come with the product sign. And then you can just write anything. Excel. Okay. That is how you use the large operators, the sum and the product sign. For CM1 and <clears throat> maybe some other paper, CM2 maybe, you will be dealing with assurances, annuities, etc. So for those, we have the accent option. From here, you can easily take there is a single dot, double dot, all of these are there. And how do you type this? Let's say I want to type annuity due. Over here, I've typed the formula for annuity due, PV of annuity due. So what do we do? First, we want two dots on top of the A, correct? So for two dots, we are going to type D dot. D is for double. So when we write, when we write two D dot, as you can see, there are two dots, but they are not on top of A. They are slightly after it. So what do you do? You press a spacebar again. As soon as you press the spacebar again, the MS Word application understands that you are trying to put the two dots on top of the previous character. So now we have A due. And what is the next thing? In the subscript, we want, let's say, N. N and in the subscript, suppose uh, this is when you, you do not mention the interest rate along with the number of years or the number of periods, but suppose you want to mention the interest rate also in the subscript only. So what do you do? As soon as you press the N, your cursor came and you press the space bar, your cursor came back to normal. So what do you do? You press the left arrow and you move back to the box of the subscript. Now you can add anything in that box. Let's say given I. Yeah. So this is how we use uh, assurances and annuities. This is how we can deal with them. Similarly for other papers, let's say you are uh, using a maximum likelihood estimate. So for any estimator, we have to put a hat on top of the variable. Correct? So if you want to type lambda hat, so how do you type this? For example, here I have used lambda hat. You press, you write lambda and you get the symbol normally. After that, you use the backward slash for hat. Now the hat has come, but just like before, it is after the lambda. So what will we do? We will again press the space bar and it will come on top of the lambda. Now we have lambda hat. Similarly for x bar, we want a bar on top of x. So we are going to type x backward slash bar and two times we will press the space bar so that it comes on top of x. Now what happens if suppose you want a long expression inside the bar or under the bar. You can even do it this way.
we got the bar now when we press the space bar we have an empty box under the bar what can we do let's say there is an entire expression and we will just go on typing under the bar after you are done typing under the bar you will have to press the right arrow to come outside the bar and type the rest of the things never ever forget that the right arrow is very important brackets are very important in equation editor because these are what make sure that you are not typing anything and everything so for example if you are typing under the square root then you have to be sure that only the content which is supposed to be inside the square root is inside the rest of it is outside only clear let's see if there is anything else double bar and differentiation double bar is simply capital b ar instead of the small b for a single bar we will write bar with a capital b and we will get a double bar clear yeah. or in the other way also you can first type x and then you can get the bar even that is possible differentiation is very easy why because uh, like the plus minus greater than equal to less than equal to even division or the numerator denominator form is fraction form is something that the equation editor automatically intakes so if i'm typing 4 by 5 it will automatically come into the fraction form so if i want to write dy by dx and it will automatically come as dy by dx only thing is partial fractions for partial of uh, not partial fractions uh, partial derivation derivatives for partial derivatives instead of the d we use a slightly curved d which actually looks like this d this is the d we used for partial derivatives right so what is the shortcut for getting this d instead of selecting it from there we will use the word partial backward slash with partial gives us this symbol clear now again we will have to press the right arrow to move outside this fraction and continue typing other things now tell me does anyone have any doubt up to here after this we will just practice writing certain equations and we will be done for today any doubts yes sir uh, ma'am actually i tried for the infinity once but it is not happening like backward slash i n f t y but it is not showing Try it again. Backspace it and again write it. Many a times, what happens is maybe somewhere you have given a space before or after or something like that because of which it becomes inactive. So it may happen that any point in your exam it can happen. So what do you do that time? You either retry, you try to do it again, or even if you leave it as infinity, it's fine. the institute isn't that strict regarding typing because they know that this is not something all of us are very used to and we are pretty new to it that is why even if you leave infinity somewhere if your symbol isn't coming it's fine and next class when we will do the notational typing that time you will realize that maybe this one is easier so there is always the option for using both methods anything else everything is clear up to here okay so let's move on to our equation some equations that i have written beforehand we will just learn how to type those using the equation editor okay so first is this 
I'm just going to type it once again in front of all of you. So it is S equal to, now I will get the square root and I will use a bracket because there is a long expression inside. X square plus for alpha again, it is a Greek letter. So I will use a backward slash and write alpha divided by X minus beta. I will close the bracket and press space bar. So everything has come inside the square root now. One more thing, limits. Limits also, all you have to do is write limits, L-I-M. And then for getting the thing below the word, all you have to do is use the subscript. So how will we use that? Limit underscore, limit underscore X. For the right arrow, we had learned that there is minus sign and greater than sign. And then we will, sorry for infinity. And then we will press the space bar. That will push whatever we have typed into the bracket. That will push it into the subscript below the limit. So the uh, MS Word application knows that if with LIM we are trying to use a subscript, it will not come as the normal subscript. It will go below the limit because that is how it is supposed to be written. Correct? Then for a to the power x, it is very simple. Cube root brackets x to the power 4 plus 1. Now the minus 2x is outside the square root. So I'm closing my bracket. And now I'm pressing the right arrow to come outside the square root. Suppose I have not pressed the right arrow. Then what was happening? My minus is also coming inside the square root, a cube root. So that's why I will press the right arrow and I will write minus 2x. Next is the partial derivative. Here, as you can see, I haven't used the partial derivative. I have used the delta sign. So let's do it with the delta sign. Delta y by delta x is equal to x square plus. Now to the, in, uh, the power of exponential, we have an entire expression. So I will use a bracket and get this. Integration is int. Now, a reminder, we have to type the upper limit and lower limit together. First, we type the lower limit in a bracket since there are multiple things involved here. Besides, over here also, even sometimes even you can, uh, even we can face difficulty because it is nothing. It just becomes inactive at times. So don't feel that there is something wrong with your device or anything wrong with your typing. As long as you are using the correct symbols and everything, it's fine. Now I tried, so it happened. Remember to move out of the expression and then type the dx. <coughs> that time my sum wasn't working, but right now I did it, it worked very easily.
So we have a double product. So first we will insert the limits for this product, which is the first product. And then we will move on to the next product. Again, we will type PROD. Lower limit is I equal to zero. Upper limit is 99. And then we have KI minus I. Mu is a Greek letter, so we will use a backward slash with it. Proportional to PROP, PO, proportional to 1 by lambda. Now this formula, the PV of and between you, first we will get two dots on A. Why it's not working again? Just use it from now. As you all can see, I'm making use of so many brackets so that none of it goes haywire. Now for the multiplication, what I would say is you can simply use the asterisk and in case some of you don't uh, are not comfortable using the asterisk, the shortcut is times. Times will get you the multiplication sign. And then 1 plus. Here I have taken an example to show capital Greek letters. I have this theta is the capital theta. So I have used a capital T. And then the next theta is the small theta. So I'm going to use a lowercase t. Okay. Here again, for the normal distribution P uh, CDF, it's a capital phi and not a small phi. So that's why I'm using a capital P is equal to 0 0.0678. This is lambda. Then I want to add a hat to it. So I'm going to add the hat and press spacebar twice is equal to x. Again, I will add a bar and press spacebar twice. <clears throat> what I want you all to do, I will be sharing this document, the original document with all of you so that you will have a ready hand uh, ready handbook for all the shortcuts. As well as I want you all to practice all these equations because more or less everything that is used in the equation editor is covered in these equations. So I want you all to practice typing these equations at home so that and not just once, maybe twice, thrice so that your speed also improves and you get the hang of it. Any doubts anyone? Yes, I'll. Ma'am, for the Greek letters, can we directly select it from the formula tab, like the, using the equation editor? For the? For Greek letters, ma'am. Greek letters, yeah. You can, use, you can use your cursor for anything. Whatever I have taught today, it is for improving your speed. Yes, Debani, I will, I, as I said, I will share this file for reference as well as for practicing the given equations. So uh, don't worry about that. And Zahil, as I said, that um, the queer, the ribbon or the tab can be used at any moment of time. Even if your typing isn't working, you can always go back to the tab and use it. That they are not going to object. But 
what i taught today is simply because you will realize that if each time you want to go and select in an equation when you're writing it there are multiple greek letters and multiple notations that you will want to have to use so that time it gets very time consuming to go and select each and everything instead as you are saying it from your mouth you can simply go on typing it so it becomes faster clear oh yes ma'am any other questions anyone everything is clear whatever we have done today any other notation or any other equation that you might want to type or you are not you are unsure of how we are going to type that what you all can do is uh, before the next class you all can go through your material or you all can go through your notes and you can see if there is anything new that comes in front of you and you might feel that this how how will we type this then in the next class you can always come and ask me how we are going to type a certain thing and apart from that in some days we will take paper specific classes where only we will be solving most of the paper in ms word okay so uh, i think we should end today's session over here thank you all of you thank you ma'am thank you so oh, thank you ma'am